Hey folks, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're taking a look at a, well, it's basically a copy of uh, Spider Coast Manix, Manix 2. Looks a little different, but of course, uh, you know, it's not an exact copy. The handle's similar, but different. The blade, again, similar, but different. It's actually got a bit of a rise and then a drop right there, unlike the uh, Spider Coast Manix. Very much the same shape, though, and the same kind of basically the same kind of lock system, which is in a take on the axis lock. Uh, they call it compression lock. Uh, typical Spyderco kind of spoon, pocket clip, uh, right or left, and uh, some other things. If you're interested in this, and when I did the unboxing, uh, several of you said, yeah, I'd like to see the review of this guy sooner than later, and that's why I'm bringing it to you right now. So why don't you get yourself comfortable, grab a sandwich, or a sandwich. <laughs> I'm Canadian, we say sandwich. And uh, bring it onto your uh, computer, not onto your computer. Boy, oh boy, I'm getting my words mixed up today. Just get yourself comfortable, stick around. The review's coming at you right now. Okay, the first thing I'll let you know is that it comes in several colors and not all the colors are always available. Also, it's a little bit hard to find. Um, Gearbest has it in black right now for $20 until the end of August. It's a very low cost uh, copy of the Spyderco and I think it shows. Uh, the compression lock here is okay. Uh, the actuators, you can see it sticks out proud on the side of the knife there so it's easy to grab and pull. Uh, but even if you pull it all the way back it doesn't, fring to doesn't swing totally free. We even if you pull this all the way back, it doesn't swing totally freely. Uh, it sort of starts touching right there and it's grabbing onto the spring and trying to push it back even further. So even though you pull it back all the way, it's hard to swing the blade out and closed. So yeah, the, the lock's okay. Lockup is pretty good. There's some blade play up and down. So if I go uh, right now that way and this way, it moves a little bit. And you might be able to see it. And if you're looking right up there, you can see it. So, yeah, it's not the greatest that way, but uh, side to side, very, very tiny, tiny bit. Uh, I can tighten that up here and get away this, get the side to side away, but then it doesn't move that smoothly. Uh, I haven't taken it apart yet. I should take it, I will take it apart and show you pictures of the inside. I like to evaluate it before I've taken it apart and, uh, you know, optimize it or anything. I think it's got washers and not ball bearings, but uh, let me show you the pictures of it taken apart right now. And of course I took those pictures after I had recorded what I'm saying right now. So that's what the inside looks like. Uh, there's no skeletonizing on the liners. The liners are fairly thin. Uh, a little bit of a back spacer here and then open back here. And of course their motto here, one knife, one life. And there's the model number 1609. 440C stainless steel is what they say it is. And there's the brother, again, one knife, one life uh, logo. It's comfortable in hand with this arch back here. You know, Spyderco does do a good design on their knives, and so it's comfortable that way. But I'll talk more about the handle comfort in a little while. Uh, odd thing about this knife is you've got two hollow holes right here, or see-through holes, as you can see right there. So you could use one of those for your uh, lanyard if you want to. Or, since there's that pivot pin, not the pivot pin, there's the uh, body pin for putting it together, uh, you could put your paracord under, in and through, and then up behind that one. So basically it would, uh, you know, come in and around that post and back up like that. That would be a good way for your paracord to be inside and not bulk up the side of the, the knife to make it thicker, help it stay thin. You can see the screw holes on both sides, so it's right and left tip up. You've got your typical spoon kind of shape that uh, Spyderco usually does. And I already mentioned the full flat grind. Well, I didn't say full flat grind, but the full flat grind with a bit of a dip right there, a little bump and then a dip. Nice belly all the way up. The grinding that they did on this final grind is not all that great. Um, 
as you can see right here, the angle's shallow, that's why it's wider like this. And then it gets smaller here, like more narrow this way, right there. So yeah, it's not great. And you can see right near the tip, there's a little bit of a fold over right there of the steel. I don't remember bumping in anything, uh, but that edge right there, I guess they made it too thin. Uh, I don't know if the, the uh, heat treat on this is a little bit off or not. I'll find out when I sharpen it. And I'll sharpen this before I finish editing the video so I can say in the text on the screen right here if I think that the hardness is on par of where it should be or not. There's no sharpness choil. I really like knives having sharpness choils. It's easier to sharpen it to the end, but at least the plunge, you know, from the ricasso to the grind here, it goes straight down, so you can sharpen right to the end. So it's not as bad as when there's a gradual plunge. A gradual plunge with no sharpness choil, you know, that bugs me a little bit, but this isn't too bad. Uh, well, let's go over all of the dimensions uh, for those people who are interested in those kinds of things. When this disappears, that means I'm done with the dimensions. First, the weight, 141 grams, 4.95 ounces, so just under 5 ounces, a little bit lighter for the smaller version. The factory sharpness, it is fairly sharp at a couple spots there, and where I cut it, 125, that is sharp. Uh, you know, the sharpness is good from the factory, but the actual grinding that they did, I think, is actually a little bit poor uh, for the long term. Uh, but sharpen your knives, learn how to sharpen your knives, and you'll end up being able to, you know, adjust these, you know, imperfections and make them even better. Let's do the measurements now. The cutting edge, 9.18 centimeters, 3.61 inches. The blade length tip to the closest spot on the handle, 9.48 centimeters, 3.73 inches. The blade thickness is 3.13 millimeters, which is 0.123 inches. The blade depth, and I usually measure it about an inch from the end of the uh, cutting edge up that way, so right about here. Actually, I think this time I measured it at the widest spot right here. 3.22 centimeters, 1.27 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind. The steel is 0.71 millimeters thick. That's 0 0.028 of an inch. I like it to be half a millimeter thick. So the steel is fairly thick behind the grind, thicker than I like it to be. But of course you can make a knife sharp even if it's thick. It just means it's that much harder to slice through you know, denser products, you know, like um, a gourd, like a pumpkin or stuff like that. The thicker it is behind the grain, the harder it is to move the materials away as you're cutting through them. The grind angle. Ah, I have not measured that yet. <laughs> I'll put it on the screen right here. Actually, I'll put it on the screen right here what the grind angle is. So there you go. You can compare the actual numbers with uh, against 20 degrees per side and see how far off that is. The handle, the handle length is 12.27 centimeters, 4.83 inches. Uh, the thickness of the, I mean, the grip area here is 10.86 centimeters, 4.28 inches. The handle thickness is 9.9 .9 millimeters, basically one centimeter, 0.39 of an inch. So it's fairly thin handle right here. The handle depth, that's of this dimension here, 3.26 centimeters, which is 1.28 inches. And when it's closed, the widest spot is right there. 4.78 centimeters, 1.88 inches. So it does fill up a pocket in the terms of its width, but the thinness is very thin. The total length of this knife is 21.8 centimeters, 8.58 inches. So those are the main numbers on this thing. I've already told you, I think I told you some of the price. Uh, Gearbest has it. You know, around $20 US until the end of August. It's on a special price. Um, and uh, that's about $27 Canadian, about 18 euros, about 16 and a half British pounds. I'll have links down below for Gearbest companies that I've dealt with many times and I've shopped at. And you generally get decent service from them, although it is slow service and slow uh, shipping but uh, very often you get free shipping or very low cost shipping. So you get what you pay for and it's reasonable, although it's not great. I did not find this knife at any uh, supplier that's in the United States. Unique features? No, not really. Uh, there's a spider code design. It, 
So these guys don't get any credit for any of the features. Um, pros and cons. Uh, I like the jimping on the thumb riser here. It might be a little bit aggressive, but it's not bad. You can get a really good grip in there as far as that goes. Uh, I like the lanyard options here. Um, Lockup is pretty good. You know, it's not great, but it's not terrible. It's pretty good, especially for a $20 knife. Um, the cons, the handle is weird being this high and this thin. So if you've got large, extra large hands, well then this dimension feels good, but the th it's too thin, it feels too thin, at least to me. And if you've got smaller hands, then the thinness is okay, but it's so big this way. I don't find this knife to be very comfortable, either just in the hand when I'm playing with it, but especially when I'm using it. I, I just, bandit, no, ba no, bandit, bandit, no, hey, bandit. Stay here, stay, stay, stay. So the handle is somewhat comfortable, but not great. Uh, somewhat uncomfortable, but not terrible. I hope you get my meaning there. So there's that. Uh, the pocket clip. I like the spoon-shaped pocket clip. Uh, it has about an inch of the knife sticking out of the pocket. Let's demonstrate that. And let's also demonstrate this. And I'm not doing that on purpose. The problem there is, see how close that is to the handle here? I'll need to take this off and bend it so that this is further out. And if it's, you know, if I pulled it further out that way, then it would go underneath each time and be useful that way. But as it is right now, it's a total pain in the butt uh, putting this in your pocket. So it does need an adjustment on the parts of this. You take it off and you put some tape on your pliers so that you don't scratch up the knife or scratch up the pocket clip, grab it here and grab it here and bend it up until it's, you know, up a bit. And then, you know, it'll go on just fine. Do it in very tiny steps because if you bend it too far, then it's going to be loose on your pocket and fall all over the place. So there you go. That is the long and the short of this knife. For $20, if you really like the design, you know, go ahead and buy it. It's, it's a recommend. If you can deal with those little flaws that are here, you know, there's several of them, but if you don't mind it for $20, hey, you've got a reasonable knife for the price. Um, and uh, so there you go. Get them while you can because they're running out very fast. Uh, in Canada, you know, CBSA is being as nasty as ever. You may or may not get your folding knife into Canada. Uh, you know, I still keep buying stuff and having it shipped into Canada. Generally, I send it to a friend's in the United States and have them send it to me but sometimes you just need to buy from the vendor and have them ship directly and you know about one-third of the knives right now are in my estimation are getting stopped by CBSA but at least some of them are getting through most of them are getting through so you got to take your chances for twenty dollars it's not that big of a risk uh, it's twenty US dollars so thanks for watching thanks for liking my videos Thanks for sharing uh, my channel with your friends and neighbors. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com slash CCE. I would appreciate that. And uh, remember, guys, when you've got a knife in your hands, it's a good idea to cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye now.